Welcome back, this is Random Gamer. I have gathered exactly 100 satisfactory tips, pun intended, for you to take advantage of and enjoy. Smash the like button to feed the YouTube algorithm and make sure to subscribe for more content like that. To truly celebrate the 1000 subscribers milestone, I have launched a clothing line for true gamers. You can find the link in the video description as well as in the top right corner. Make sure to check it out. Starting location selection only selects your spawning biome. You can travel to all of the other ones because they are all located on the same map. Increase the field of view in the game settings to see your surroundings better. Explore the map. Do not stay in one location, get to know your area. Press B to toggle flashlight if needed. Crouch slide jump is the fastest on foot moving method. Collect every new thing you see to trigger research trees. When fighting enemies, use jumping to dodge the hits. The most common enemy, Hawk, needs 4 hits with the zapper. Always gather power slugs to craft power shards later. Use power shards in extraction machines such as miners rather than production machines like constructors but consider building more buildings before adding power shards to them because look at the power cost. Before the game lets you build a miner on a node, you need to get rid of the large rock formation on top of the mining node manually. Hold E, then press Tab to AFK mine the nodes. Multiple portable miners can be put on a single node. There are three types of nodes in the game. Impure, Normal and Pure. Impure gives half of the normal node and Pure node gives twice the amount of the normal node. In the hub, Connect both generators to the power line, not only one. You can deconstruct only power lines too, not needing to demolish power poles themselves. Open build menu and use the numbers on your keyboard to bind items to one of your quick bars. You have 10 in total. If you need flowers, leaves or wood or just want to cut through vines, use a chainsaw. Automate as soon as possible and do automate every material. You will thank yourself later. Only manual crafting should be done in the beginning to establish essential automation itself. Use crafting to-do list when you might not remember everything by heart. Start hard drive hunting early in the game to unlock alternate recipes for starter items. The unlocking is random but it is connected to your research levels. Therefore there is a bigger chance to unlock low tier alternate recipes when you're still in the low tier of the game. Don't forget to gather hard drives later in the game also. When a hard drive needs power to unlock, build a temporary biomass burner setup. Be sure to gather the needed materials for at least a few biomass burners as well as some fuel for them. Press N to quick search items and buildings. By the way, it is also a calculator. Build on foundations as soon as possible to better align your machines. Fastest way to build a large flat area with foundations is eye level spam placement method. Plan out the factory beforehand to gradually expand on it and therefore reduce the redoing. Calculate your production line resource demands from the end to the beginning before the building process itself. Make sure your factories have an odd number of length if you want to use perfectly aligned middle doorways. Copy and paste buildings with the eyedropper method. Hold the control key to snap align machines. When building something bigger, put every frequently used component right beside your build to quickly eyedrop it. Or create a custom hotbar for the build instead. A few seconds of preparing can save you hours in the long run. Use multi-delete. Just hold control while in dismantling mode to select multiple buildings. Deconstruction is with no loss of items even if there is something already crafting or simply stored inside of it. If you don't have room in your inventory when dismantling something, it leaves a crate with all of the items on the ground. If you want, you can relocate your hub. Everything in the storage will be also salvaged. Always build the conveyors a bit higher than yourself to keep the walkways free. Avoid clipping for cleaner look. Make 90 degree connections to make it look neat and professionally satisfactory. Splitters and mergers can be placed directly on the belts or to the end of belts in addition to just placing them on the floor. Belts, power poles and miners can be upgraded. You don't need to demolish the old ones. 
You can clip splitters and meshes through power poles. You can easily count buildings with the deconstruction menu while selecting up to 50 buildings. Be careful not to delete them by accident. You can see what is in the storage container or what is being produced in a machine with the deconstruction menu from quite far away without the need of even opening them. Don't forget that you can also build vertically rather than only horizontally. Use this to your advantage whenever possible. Use conveyor lifts whenever possible to achieve clean and compact builds. Conveyor lifts max height is 13 walls. Split items to a storage container in the end of the production lines for later use. Item stacks can be split in half by left clicking on them. When holding the left click, you can select a specific amount to split by typing the desired number. Double click to move a stack of items. Hold control and click on an item to move all of the same item stacks. You can use the same method for filling the required items for the hub milestone upgrades also. Hold down control as well as the left click and drag to move all of the same item stacks to trash. To fill a container only to a specific slot amount, spam split something cheap in it like concrete. Make sure that the cheap item is not the item you want to collect in the storage container. Preferably create a central storage facility as soon as possible to easily access everything from the same place. Ore nodes can be covered with foundations and the miners will still work. Advance to coal as soon as possible to get the power automated. Craft the blade runners to move a lot faster. Build manifolds to connect multiple buildings to one conveyor line. Just split the conveyor to every machine and let the system fill up to reach its full potential. Be sure to use the right conveyor chairs. Use the awesome shop. Generate coupons passively while routing item overflows to the resource sinks. One of the first things you should buy from the awesome shop is wall power joints to make your power setup quite a bit neater. Bring concrete to build foundations for temporary bridges and other essential building materials are also very useful to carry when going exploring. Use stackable conveyor poles or storage containers to reach heights. You can also gain height by stacking the 2x4 meter foundations while jumping or by using the awesome shop's 8x8 double ramps instead. Regular foundations are sometimes impossible to place. Use down corner ramps instead of regular foundations because they can be clipped through building's clearance. When configuring machines, set the specific items per minute rather than clock speed percentage. Use the color gun to further customize the look of your factory. The first color will color the entire game and everything you build next. Note that when you change that, you might not remember the default values. Here they are, 16, 0 0.93, 0 0.95, 232, 0 0.57 and 0 0.26. The smallest 90 degree angle rail you can build is with a radius of 3 and biggest is with a radius of about 8 foundations. Create automated walkways while building conveyors flush with the foundation floor. Just build the conveyor poles one 8x1 foundation deeper than your factory floor and then build foundations on top of that, completely hiding the poles and then connect the conveyors. Use hyper tubes whenever possible, for long distance travel and also between buildings or factory floors for example. Build a row of powered hypertube entrances to get a significant speed boost to either travel through a hypertube like a normal person would or to cannonball yourself across the map like I would. You can turn around while inside a hypertube, just move backwards. Pipes and hypertubes can be built with different modes. You can choose the suitable one for you by pressing R. Build pillars etc. in the center of staircases to minimize the danger of falling. Build pipeline pumps directly on the walls to avoid clipping. Every pump has a head lift of 20 meters which is equivalent to 5 walls. Craft the jetpack to reach heights a lot easier. Make sure to keep some thrust for safe landing. Spamming jetpacks thrust brings you higher. Keep truck stations away from your working area and obstacles. When setting up a truck station, make sure to also provide consistent fuel to the station and don't forget to configure the load and unload option as needed. 
When you need to put a bulk of the fuel item in the truck station, hold control and drag the item rather than control click because otherwise it tries to go to the singular fuel slot instead. You can use basically anything to fuel the trucks with, from leaves to nuclear fuel rods, but it is best to start with coal and then move to packaged fuel later in the game. There are plenty of options to choose from. To edit the truck pass, walk to a node, press E to edit, delete extra, regular or pause nodes, and edit the station one to about 15 to 25 seconds, test it out yourself to reach a perfect timing. If you use multiple truck stations near each other where the truck lines are crossing, if any problems occur, leave the location so trucks can respawn to the nodes and keep working as before, because when you are near to the trucks it requires physics to complete the routes, when you are far it's only maths. Explorer. The fastest vehicle in the game can be unlocked in the quads research in the map. Rifle. The best weapon in the game can be unlocked in the sulfur research in the map. Map can be also unlocked in the map under the quads research. You can destroy cracked boulders with nobelisks, they might uncover resource nodes, power slugs and cave entrances. You can daisy chain jump pads to create an automated travel path when you align the pads correctly. You can survive a high fall when you land in deep enough water or on slime jelly landing pads. Keep spare equipment as blade runners and or jetpack and weapons and definitely essential building resources in your base in case you die. If you die, all items in the inventory will drop in the death crate at the location of the engineer's corpse, which will appear on the compass. The death crate stays there forever until emptied by the player. If you die to the void, the crate will appear either near the void or by your hub. Its marker disappears from the compass once the crate is emptied or the game is reloaded. In multiplayer, to indicate something to other players, hold ALT and press left mouse to make a temporary exclamation mark. Press P for taking pictures or capturing videos without the HUD. You cannot destroy gas plants. Do not build your base near them because you need the room to expand freely. If you need to travel through gas areas, craft a gas mask and filters to survive. Store nuclear waste far far away and create a massive storage for it. As of now, there is not a use for it. When walking near radioactive areas, you need to wear a radiation suit and use a gas mask with iodine infused filters. If you are inside of a train, you will not take damage from gas or radiation. To enable the console, press Ctrl Shift L and after that press tilde and then type r.fork0 to disable all fork in the game. Same thing but one to re-enable it or you can re-log instead. There is also a way to pause the game and kill the player if needed. As a matter of fact, there are over 2000 commands to use. More on that in the official wiki. Second to last tip is a fun one. You can ride the invincible giant flying manta. And last, but certainly not least, if you want to install mods to the base game, check out my guide linked below as well as in the top right corner. I have also created tens and tens of mod spotlights for you to take a look. A very small percentage of you, my honored viewers, are subscribed. This would really help the channel and after all it's completely free and you can always change your mind. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and subscribe for more content like that. Make sure to click on the bell so you can get a notification about future uploads. See you on the next one.